Hello and welcome to part 3 of this tutorial for Serum. In the first part we looked at where all the main components are and navigating a way around the synth. In the second part we went a little bit more into how the wavetable aspect of it works. And in this third part we're going to actually build a patch, uh, get some modulation involved, turn everything on and, and you can really start to hear how great this synth actually is. So to start off with on oscillator A, uh, I don't want to use the default saw wave preset because it's quite boring. Uh, so I'm going to click on where it says default, go down to spectral and choose monster one. Um, and then I'm going to click on the view to get into the 3D view because this is just going to give us a bit more useful visual feedback when we actually start mapping LFOs and modulating things. Now since I'm making a bass sound I want to drop the octave down a couple of octaves like so and I'm also going to turn on the sub to give a bit more low end pressure uh, which equally needs to be dropped down a couple of octaves as well. So let's hear how that sounds. Okay cool, uh, not very exciting at the moment so let's get LFO1 involved. So I'm going to want to map LFO1 to the wavetable position of oscillator A and to do that I basically click and drag on the header of the LFO here and drop it onto where it says wavetable position on oscillator A. Now when you drag and drop like this usually it maps to the full range or it will go right up to the top. Now we can have a quick listen to how that sounds but it's probably going to be a little bit too extreme. <laughs> Yeah, I think that is a bit too much. So let's bring the range down just by clicking on this little blue circle and dragging down with the mouse to decrease the range. And then I can move this wavetable position. So I'm going to play a note and just move that and try and find a nice spot for it. Okay, that kind of works for me. Um, so the next thing I want to get involved is the filter. So turn on the filter by clicking the button next to the name at the top. And I'm going to pull out one of the really weird ones because you don't often get to mess around with them. Uh, so I'm going to pull out Flange Plus, which as you can see is doing some pretty mad stuff. So the cutoff we can actually find a good place for it when uh, we map the LFO over. Uh, but before we do anything else, just make sure that the sub is routed through by clicking the button next to the S in the filter section. Um, and I'm also just going to boost the res a bit, which as you can see exaggerates what the filter is doing. But I'm not actually going to boost it too much, just a touch. And I'm also going to bring up the drive, which you can see pushes up the volume a bit too, just to give it a bit of extra grit and weight. So let's, uh, let's uh, map LFO1 to the cutoff by doing the same thing. So I'm just going to drag and drop the header of LFO1 over, drop it onto the cutoff of 2, and as you can see it's uh, currently modulating up to the top of the range, but actually I'm going to bring that down a bit. So let's hear how that sounds. So yeah, it sounds pretty interesting. Um, but at the moment our modulation is still pretty damn simplistic. So the next thing I want to get involved is uh, one of the envelopes, which are on the left-hand side down at the bottom. Now, envelope one is uh, by default your amplitude envelope, so uh, if you wanted to create a slower attack, you could just drag that point over like so. And you can see there's a little blue dot that tells you where you are along your envelope, the same as with the LFO, very handy. Or if we wanted to change the release, uh, you can just drag out this bottom point, um, like so. But uh, actually I want to use an envelope to modulate the pitch of oscillator A, just to give us a real nice uh, kick drum-esque kind of a attack to the bass sound. So 
I'm going to make a very rapidly decaying slope by grabbing this point at the back of the envelope and pulling it down like so. As you can see across the bottom we've got dials for all these parameters as well so I can change the decay like that too. Um, very good if you want to get a very precise time out of it. So yeah, let's go for somewhere around 150 milliseconds. And I'm going to just drag and drop this onto the coarse tune of Monster 1, like so. Now that sounds pretty weird, and the reason for that is because it's in the bipolar mode. Now it's very small, so you might not quite be able to see, but the, on this blue line, which is showing the modulation amount for the coarse pitch, there is a tiny white dot in the center. What that means is it's bipolar mode, so at the start of the envelope it's actually pushing it up to be quite a bit higher than the original pitch, but then by the time it's fully released it's far too low, and actually too low for us to get any decent uh, kind of low end out of it. So I'm just going to go over to the Matrix tab at the top and find the Envelope 2. Yep, Envelope 2 is under the destination bit here. You can see it's modulating A coarse pitch. Um, and this double headed arrow means it's in the bipolar mode and we just want it to be in uh, the unipolar mode. So I'm just going to click on that there. And what this means is that now you can see the tiny white dot is just at the bottom. So by the time this envelope is released, it is just going to stay at the pitch we've actually originally set it at. And you can play around with the decay time just to get something that you like. Great. So... Uh, that's really just the very basic way of using these envelopes and LFOs and actually uh, you can add in pretty much as many breakpoints to these as you like. So I am going to go back to LFO1 and I'm just going to start chucking loads of uh, breakpoints onto it um, so we can get something kind of crazy going on. Now I'm making these points by just double clicking anywhere on the line and you can see it creates a point like that. And then you can just drag them around and really get pretty inventive with what's going on. Um, it's very good for fine tuning exactly what your LFO is doing as well, which is something that you'll find once you've got a bit of sound running, you'll start to get a clearer idea of maybe what you want your LFO to be doing. It's just very, very flexible. You can also adjust the curves as well by moving these points here. So really there's a quite astonishing amount of control actually given to you just with a simple LFO which we're all familiar with. So let's hear how that sounds. Maybe a little bit too quick at the moment so I'm going to turn the rate down. And if you're working with these complicated shapes you might actually want to uh, have the, the LFO trigger every time you press a note rather than the way it's set up at the moment where it's locked to the grid of your sequencer. So just by clicking on the trig here it's going to restart every time I press a key. And you can really play around with this and fine tune it to your heart's content actually. Okay, great. Now the same thing applies to an envelopes as well, so if you want to get stuck into that too, then you, you also can. Um, slightly more limited than the LFOs, but, uh, but you still have the option to basically shape it however you like. Um, but uh, Serum doesn't just stop there with the uh, oscillators, filters and LFOs. Um, it actually has a pretty extensive FX collection as well, so if I click on the FX tab at the top here, uh, we've got a pretty large range of effects down the left hand side which you turn on and off by clicking on the lights next to their names like so. And As you can see they're all nicely colour coded to make it a bit easier to see what's going on. Now I'm going to just pull out a few of these that are maybe slightly more unusual plugins. Most of you probably have come into contact with flanges and phases and choruses, delays and so on up to now. Um, so you kind of know what they are going to do. But uh, there's a few in here that have some cool things, so I'm going to treat the effects bit as maybe more of a little tips and tricks section, actually. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the hyperdimension, which uh, allows you to add in sort of unison and just a bit of like depth to your sound. 
so let's see how that sounds just with the default. And you can turn them on and off just sort of temporary bypass just by clicking this power button on the right hand side. So I'm just going to turn it on and off while I'm playing a note. Great, so I'm going to pull down the mix actually ever so slightly on the t the, uh, the hyper side. Um, and uh, just going to push up the dimension size just a, just a bit. Maybe not too much. Too much and it starts to get a bit too... take over a little bit too much, I think. Okay, great. So that's giving it a bit of extra kind of width, width and depth. Um, next I'm going to turn on the distortion. Um, which has quite a few modes in it, uh, which you can find by clicking on where it says tube here. You can see there's quite a few. Um, one of my favorites uh, is Diode 2. Um, and you're really going to instantly hear how this distorts. Um, now, I'm actually going to assign LFO 1 to the drive dial, so hopefully it should start changing the drive uh, in the same way that it's uh, modulating the wavetable position of oscillator A and the same, same, same way it's modulating the wavetable position of the filter as well. So you can really fiddle around with that till your heart's content um, try and get the drive setting right um, if it's too high it just destroys the sound if it's too low then you don't really hear it at all so it's all about trying to find that happy middle ground uh, essentially um, now the next thing I'm going to add on is the compressor um, which has all the uh, parameters that you might expect from a compressor threshold, ratio, attack, release and then a, a gain at the end in case you need to boost the volume at all so that all works in a fairly standard kind of a way um, and can be quite good for just squashing your sound or giving it a bit of a boost. But what I really like about it is this multiband button at the bottom. So at the moment you will see it's just a stereo compressor. As I bring the threshold essentially down, you can see it going down minus 40, minus 50 and so on. You can see the gain reduction going up here. And if I switch it into multiband, you can see it splits into three bands, which are low, mid, and high. And then as I move the threshold around, it's going to drastically start to change the sound, actually. So that's quite good for just adding a bit of extra sharpness and brightness in there. Um, uh, now, the next thing that I am uh, going to add on is just to show you that uh, they also give you an EQ, uh, which allows you to just have either a couple of shelves, if I just do this, you can see, uh, or notches, or high cut, low cut, um, and you've got Q and frequency settings, so of course you can also map these to your LFO if you so choose as well. Uh, so that's quite handy as well. And, and then finally there's the filter, uh, which essentially is exactly the same as the other filter we used in the main display but you just don't get the graphic, but you have all the same options as you can see here. Um, so if you feel like you want to get a bit more filtering on there, then you can do that as well. Um, now, if you want to reorganize these uh, plugins to create your own chain, uh, as you may well want to do, then it's just literally as simple as dragging and dropping the effects on the left-hand side. So there we go, move the compressor, move it up to the top. We move the EQ up there, could put the EQ earlier, and it's going to, the same as working within your DAW, it's actually going to have an effect on the sound as well, so you can start to get a bit more creative with how you actually put the whole thing together. So let's have a quick listen to how that sound sounds. Uh, now we're all basically done with it. <laughs> And there we 
we go. Um, hopefully that's enough of a general starting guide to allow you to start getting stuck in and using all the parts of Serum to make some interesting sounds. Uh, if you've just jumped in for this final part of the video and there's anything you're not sure about, it will have been covered in the previous two, so make sure that you go back and check those out as well. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>